What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Double Tech. It's your boy Dave here with Q. Uh, last night, we got a chance to check out the Lakers versus the Nets on TNT. Yes, sir. And uh, the return of Anthony Davis. Hey. Hey. So showing, getting that dub, Lakers take it um, over Brooklyn, who was missing Kevin Durant and Kyrie at mm -hmm. home. Uh, so what are your thoughts on Anthony Davis's return and the state of the Lakers now? T take it into account that Brooklyn was under man. Um, the things I liked about it were we saw the Lakers that we've been asking for all season, um, but not, and this is what taking the nets out. We saw a Lakers that was running the floor. They were going on fast breaks. We talked about this. They weren't yeah. just getting the ball and stopping it. They were going on fast breaks. They were hustling down court. They were running that team out. And um, I like that part. I liked it because that's what they're going to need to do night in and night out. Um, when AD was out, I feel like obviously Frank Vogel wanting to change the plan around and figure things out was a little bit hard without AD knowing he's going to start at the five, right? Um, you have to start Dwight Howard or LeBron James. Um, and that changed the dynamic because he was taking LeBron's place, right? Um, so yeah, you, you, yeah, like so now you put AD back on the floor, you got a five who can run. Um, and he's just really got to get in his ear. But like I said, I liked what we saw. The confidence was there. Um, it wasn't really a battle, though, right? So it, the real test is going to be, can they go out there and grid out four quarters? Because I, what I liked about this was they didn't wait for the team to stick along for three quarters and all that and then try to figure no, they something put out. out. They tried to yeah. put them out early, and that's what this team is going to require to win at least enough games to get into the playoffs. Beat the teams you're supposed to beat. Run them down. First two or three quarters, you need to get up. Use your weapons as necessary. And then fourth quarter, that's where you guys get their rest. That's where you guys just sit a little bit. You know, you're up by 20, 25 against teams like Sacramento, Detroit, all these random teams. You go ahead and you win those. You secure that, you secure that win early. And that's what they did yesterday. They didn't give Brooklyn a shot. They went at, at them right away. At all. And I, I love the timing. I got to give it up to Palinka, the rest of the Lakers front office, because you, you know, two birds with one stone here. We have Anthony Davis brought back. So now we're not talking about Russell Westbrook. Mm -hmm. Great. That's great. Secondly, we're going to bring Anthony Davis when they're starting De'Ron Sharp. Yeah. Man, it couldn't have worked out better. Didn't, didn't even have to deal better. with Claxton. Yep. Didn't have to deal with anybody. He's like, go cook Aldrich and we'll be great. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I, I got to give it up to them there because getting Anthony Davis, his reps back in an easy work environment, yeah. that's huge for because he's a confidence guy, right? Mm -hmm. You have to boost his confidence first. You don't send him out yeah. there and say, hey, you know, tonight you're dealing with John Collins. He might dunk on you three times. Like, no. Yeah. Because that's right now the narrative was, you know, he's not a top five big no more. He's not a top five oh, big, man. Is what they're saying. And, Woo. you know, like it's you said, it's confidence. Yeah, and they talk about confidence, and you're right. That was perfect. I feel like he could have come back possibly a little bit sooner, maybe a little bit later, but that was the right time to slide him into the mix, get your reps, get your reps with and your primates, primary teammates. I don't think that it's coincidence that it was on a nationally televised game because this, mm -hmm. this game has been nationally televised. Mm -hmm. It was going to be. You're, we're playing Brooklyn, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, this wasn't one that just got flipped over, you know. We avoided playing a team that could have had someone with some upsets because of a matchup issue, right? Mm -hmm. You bring them back against Orlando, maybe you don't get the same Anthony Davis. Mm -hmm. And what uh, else you get from this is you get now we're talking about Frank Vogel's job at the end of this. I don't want to go too far into it, but now that AD is back, if you've seen some changes in the way they run the floor. Now, I think, is the time to officially talk about these games mattering for Frank Vogel's job. You got to be agreed because you must perform now that you have yes. healthy roster. Prior, I mean, we can make every excuse in the book. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what you knew you were going into. We were talking about Anthony Davis at the five in the summer. That's what mm -hmm. we were told from Lakers management that we would see. That's what we were told from Vogel. Mm -hmm. So is he going to be able to take advantage of the matchups at the five consistently? I don't know. I think he opens up the floor for Westbrook and LeBron tremendously. Tremendously. So as a decoy and as a second or third presence, Anthony Davis in the regular season becomes huge. Which I now, think we saw a lot of last night was LeBron able yeah. to take guys off the dribble, Anthony Davis. And I hate, you know, at this age, I hate to ask for it, but we saw last night was Vogel scrap the old strategy, running it through AD, AD, you be the guy and all that. It was what we wanted. It was what the idea should be by a player by that age. But 
damn LeBron's greatness and being able to say, you know what? Okay, I got it. Y'all play around me. And we'll figure it out as I go because it's going to yes. be my fault if we don't that's make true. it. And right. that's what the strategy is going to be. And his legacy. No one's going to look back at AD and blame it on him. They're going to say, AD was hurt. <laughs> not, is he always hurt? That's another thing. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, with the Lakers, it's going to on the head of LeBron, on the back of LeBron, however it has to be. And so mm-hmm. Westbrook now relegated, right, mm-hmm. in role because the offense, that, like you said, is going to be run through LeBron first and then Anthony Davis second. So now where does Westbrook get his? Is fast that a breaks. part of the unit? Fast breaks. I think fast breaks will be a lot of part of it. Like I said, LeBron with his age, you let him get his buckets early. He goes to the bench. Westbrook stays on the floor with the second unit. You need okay. to be able to run the floor. Westbrook provides you that. If they're playing the way they played last night, we get to see that Westbrook again. That one that comes down with the rebound and takes you coast to coast before you could blink. That's what we want. And you're able to do that when you play it right. And like everybody's talking about threes and all this. What I've seen of late from Westbrook, he's taking only about five of them. That's enough to keep you, make people guard you, but you're not forcing it. You're not overshooting. And yeah. that's enough to keep your confidence and that's what he needs you know take the spot up ones if you miss them it's what you're supposed to have anthony davis for right and and we were able to see those transition buckets last night because of anthony davis and i gotta give him his credit because there was a lot of doubters about him on the defensive end of the floor but it was really those stops Mm -hmm. that were causing the fast break buckets you know because once he's able to put an end everyone's heading one way Mm -hmm. because we don't have to worry about oh they're definitely going to get the offensive board we got Braun at center, you know? Exactly. It was and, and that's all they need. They just need a, a ticket to the show with AD in there. Because, you know, we all know how it goes. Jokic can't hold. We've seen it. Um, and I don't know if the, if the Lakers play the way they're supposed to play. I don't know if Denver has the physicality with the way the roster is built right now to even take them to seven games, right? No, um, not at this time. Not without Murray. Like that, they exactly. need Murray. They need and So Harper. then you look at Utah, maybe. I mean, Gobert is great on defense, but he's not providing you anything offensively. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's the that's why I think they wanted to lean on AD so much, was because in the West, he's a mismatch. Obviously, in the East, you know what uh Milwaukee's gonna do. They're gonna put they're gonna put the Greek freak in front of that man and make it work, right? Yeah, that's gonna be your problem. You don't want to yeah. see honest. But I think as they're creeping into the playoffs, the matchup you want to avoid is you don't want the Suns again first round. They don't shoot want the too Suns. well. They're going to make you have to shoot the three. They're too cohesive right now yes. as a unit to see them in the first round of the playoffs. Yes. But I really think you want, as a Lakers fan, it may be counterintuitive, right? It's because mm-hmm. he's playing so well. But you kind of want John Morant and those Grizzlies young boys. You do. You do. You want to take the young team on. Yeah experience yeah. man there's really so much experience Adam, Jackson, Anthony Davis has to win that matchup yeah and I think that's going to be a huge question I mean and not just that matchup you know we you, you it's just all over he's going to have to keep Jai out the pace. it's going to be a lot of different pieces but the yeah. Grizzlies don't shoot the ball any better than the Los Angeles Lakers do from three so that's just a game on grit and experience yeah, their defense has been tremendous. You know, they're we're number one in blocks since Thanksgiving, number one in mm-hmm. steals since Thanksgiving, number one in opposing field goal percentage. But they're not going to blow you out of the water with an offensive showing outside of jaw. Maybe Desmond mm-hmm. Bain gets hot. You know, uh, Anthony Davis affects that game a lot more yes. than he does when you're dealing with a cerebral point guard like like Chris Paul. John mm-hmm. Morant has basically got the, the attack drive and then we're going to kick out. Well, AD can shut down the whole offense with that if he's playing up to the standard we know he can. Yes, and they're rotating, and they rotate. And they're That's rotating. Important. That's yes. the most important part. And, um, you know, we'll I see. like what we saw from Avery Bradley last night, although he kind of gets out of control on offense a little bit. Avery Bradley's a funny character too, right? Never seen him <laughs> play like this. I don't know why he comes to L.A. and he's trying to shoot step-back jump shots, and I see him go to the rim and he's trying to do oh. spin layups. and I don't know what, what A.B. Bradley this is. Everybody gets their little Detroit stop, I'm telling you, and then it starts. <laughs> we saw with Marcus Morris. We saw with Tobias Harris. Your boy Stanley Johnson, you get your little Detroit style, and then you think you're an ultimate hooper, bro. Yeah. I don't yeah, know why. Just, nobody some of else those possessions, I'm like, boy, you know, we, we got you to spot up. You used to be able to do that. Don't seem the same no more. But and it, it's going to take also a big piece. And this is where I don't like, you know, I always talk about I don't like the only talking about West, but it's going to take Carmelo Anthony to step up consistently. 
We don't need six threes mm-hmm. a night from you, but he's supposed to be filling a six man role on that yeah. team. I'm yeah. not seeing that from him. Six man is honestly supposed to be your most consistent guy. You know why? Because he's usually coming in against guys who are not as skilled as he is, right? Very You're supposed point. to come yeah. in there and, you know, everybody does their switch out. You may have one guy on the opposing team. They may keep the point, a couple other guys. But you're supposed to ultimately be able to dictate the game at that point and keep the score tight. You're not supposed to build a lead, right? But they're supposed to at least keep the score tight, put up some buckets so the starters can get rest. And then at some point, they're supposed to be able to, be able to say it's the fourth quarter with three minutes left, scrap the start, pull in the starters, pull somebody out, and your sixth man supposed to be able to come in and help that starter five finish the job right yeah yeah and we're not seeing that from Carmelo in. no so, that's more or so describing Westbrook honestly yes. yes um and I think that you can't have a super six like Westbrook when you don't have the starting lineup configured mm-hmm. in any way uh we know Melo can't play enough to be a part of that you know he's not strong enough defensively at this point in his career to to force Avery Bradley or Reese off the floor in certain mm-hmm. situations so if he's going to come in, you got, you're right. You have to take whoever their sub is and you have to cook that man. Mm-hmm. Like it's guaranteed. Like thinking about the matchup with Phoenix, for example, can he take Jay Crowder? Yeah. The entire series, because mm-hmm. that's what it's going to require. That's what it's going to come to. And you know, yeah. Jay Crowder, even though he's undersized, he's a, he's a gutsy man. He's going to come after you. you yeah, that's not a problem you know, that you want. LeBron scores little little buckets on and they celebrate that on phase Jay Crowder. He came in the next game and put something on him. Right. Yeah. He hit him yep. with about 15 points and some stellar defense, you know. Um, and the Suns are confident, so I don't want to see them anyway, man. You see that boy Cameron Payne talking. LeBron didn't like it, but hey, it is what it is. It's not his job to stop talking, it's just John's job to beat him. I've seen and, a lot Brian, of upset and, Lakers this season, and that's my piece on that. Stop stop crying about them talking trash. Y'all don't respect me and who I am and what I've done. Nobody care about what you've done. What are you doing right now? Yeah, absolutely. But I agree like, there. Like, when you made the comments, the same type of thing to the Grizzlies. Like, we yeah. do not care. Like, they, these young boys don't give a damn. No. They coming for your neck, and I like it. Because this is almost where we're teetering on the end of that pick-me era of the NBA. Yes, it's, where everybody's trying to be friends with LeBron. Yeah, and, now, and uh, everybody wants to team up, and we banana voting and all that. No, nah, we're going <laughs> back to that gritty. And be, you, if you notice, teams are being built again. Teams are being put together again. We're That's starting true. to transition back into an NBA where people actually want to compete against each other. Um, and the kids don't care. They want you. They're not trying to hide from you. They're not trying to shave off games. So they don't got to play the Lakers in the first round. They want you. And you better yeah. be it. And the worst part is LeBron James will be ready. Will everybody else be? Oh, uh, Big questions. Will everyone else be ready? That's Westbrook, Melo, the return of Anthony Davis. So our Double Tech fans, let us know. What do you think uh, Anthony Davis return means for the Lakers moving forward? What does it mean for their playoff matchups? Also, what does it mean for Frank Vogel keeping his job, which is a topic we recently addressed. Um, Like and subscribe to Double Tech, and we'll catch you guys later.